Hey guys, hey, 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 it is Tuesday, Tuesday, 12 noon Eastern time. What does that mean? That means JRA goes live with Making Hay with JRA. I am Lee Godbold, this is Junk Removal Authority. You are watching Making Hay with JRA, where we dissect we, the junk removal industry. For those of you that are looking to get into it, those of you that are already in it, we're gonna help you grow and expand and get into the junk removal business. Got Aaron Limpany running the show back uh, there. If you guys have any questions at all, post it into YouTube or Facebook, and he will let me know what those questions are. We'll get them answered throughout this episode. So one of the things that I always like doing uh, with these episodes, I like, talk, I like talking about stuff that's going on in, in my businesses, uh, either JRA or junk doctors, and talking about the lessons we learned from it and trying to help you guys avoid some of the mistakes we've made because we've made a bunch of them. The value when you partner with us isn't necessarily uh, in, in what to do, what we've done right. That's, that's a, a big portion of it, but almost I think one of the largest portions is to avoid the mistakes we've made because if there's a mistake to make in junk removal, we've probably made it. We're just so damn determined we've pushed through. JRA Call Center, guys, this is one of the best things that we have got out now as far as the you having freedom in your life and getting jobs booked. I guarantee our call center reps, I almost guarantee our call center reps are gonna be able to book jobs at a much higher percentage rate than you yourself will. We can take missed calls. We don't take them all. We can take missed calls. We can take after hours calls or we can take all your calls, whatever you want, check out the JRA Call Center. So the first thing I wanna talk about, I mentioned I like talking about stuff that we've got going on to help you avoid mistakes we've made. This was yesterday. This is one of our drivers yesterday on one of our poor trucks. Let me see, this showing up good up there? Yep, one of our poor trucks in Charlotte got annihilated. Somehow or another, this guy managed to run off the side of the road, jumped a ditch, there's a ditch on the left-hand corner over here, swept the entire front end of the truck out. You can see this is the front tire that's way back here. There's sway bar, if you get another picture here. The sway bar is laying on the ground. This is the condenser unit for the AC air conditioner. This truck has a brand new engine on it, maybe 4,000 miles. So we're hoping we can buy the truck back and get the engine off of it at least. Uh, but yeah, this, the truck itself, it's, it's screwed up. So what I wanna talk about is what the heck do you do when your employees F up? What do you do? Well, number one, you're gonna get pissed off at the start. I mean, how does a dude do this? You know, But then what you gotta do is you gotta ask yourself, what did I myself do wrong? I, I'm somebody that with no matter what occurs, I'm gonna blame myself to some extent. I'm gonna take ownership in it. I'm not somebody that's gonna pass it off to other individuals. So what did I do wrong here? Well, we don't have a great driving training program in place. And a lot of this goes back to, to me, driving should be simple, easy, second nature. I mean, I could drive a car when I was 10 years old, I was landing an airplane when I was 11, I was racing cars at 16. So the fact that people struggle to drive these little Suzu trucks just confounds me. But I, we need to have a driver program in place. So I had my insurance agent send information. That was Don Fowler. If you guys look back on the insurance episode, you can meet Don in that insurance episode. That was a lot of great information on that episode. It was done maybe two, maybe three weeks ago. So I had our insurance agent send over some driver training school information, safety classes. This is both online. So this is the online one. There's also one called, uh, I, I found yesterday, but this, uh, this here is like 35 bucks. Uh, it's gonna it put people through an online training school that way. I mean, that I imagine a lot of times this, this type of stuff here, it just makes people understand how serious we are about a specific task. So this is one of the things we're gonna do. They also sent me a driver training school all the way around. This is behind the wheel training school. We haven't signed up for this yet, but we're going to. Um, the other steps we're gonna take is we're gonna put at least one or two of our guys through CDL truck driving school, actually get them to the point where they have their CDL license. And we're gonna institute our very own driver training program for these individuals. And nobody, our navigators, are not gonna be able to drive one of our trucks. They're not gonna be able to back up one of our trucks. They're not gonna be able to sit in the driver's seat of one of our trucks until they've gone through this safety course. So that is this issue here is probably 80% my fault, 20% drivers. Some of you guys will probably reverse that around. 
but the fact we don't have a dedicated program in place is 100% on me. Um, so the driving school, that's one thing we're gonna do. We're also gonna create a wider pay gap between navigators and team leaders. So what we're talking about doing is on navigators, for the first month they start, we're, we're gonna pay them $12 an hour. It, they, within one month, if they have not become a team leader, so if they haven't completed driver training, maybe we extend that out to six weeks or two months, depending on how long the school is. But if over a period of time, be it a month or two months, whatever, if they haven't become a team lead, their pay is going to retract down to ten dollars an hour until they've obtained that level. You know, become a, become a team leader. If they become a team leader, their pay is going to get bumped up immediately to fourteen dollars an hour. So you got a four dollar an hour pay difference between those two positions, and then immediately, if these guys are quoting jobs correctly, if they're not tearing trucks up, if they're getting a lot of great reviews back in from customers saying so and so just did a fantastic job. Um, if their average job is where it needs to be, if they're completing a certain number of jobs per day, if they're hustling, if they're working hard, if we can tell they're really, really, really putting a lot of effort into it, we'll, we'll, we'll bump them up to 15, 16, 17 dollars an hour. We got one individual right now we're working with, uh, he's going to get bumped to 18 an hour, assuming he accepts his job position, a bit more of a managerial role and potential to make 20 to 22 an hour uh, shortly thereafter as well. Um, we've got one of the things you do need to create as you grow and we haven't done as good of a job as we should there needs to be layers of management or, or where and, and clear lines of uh, you know you, you need to have an organization chart with clear lines of responsibilities right now we've got one guy being Christian pretty much managing about 40 people and that's unrealistic the US Navy SEAL say one individual one supervisor or commander can basically lead about six people and anything more than that, you're gonna lose control. So we've got to create some other layers of supervisors because we've got to be a decent sized organization. I mean, 40 employees is getting to be a, a medium sized organization. Um, so the wider pay gap is gonna motivate TLs to actually wanna become a TL and take on that additional responsibility. Then there's gotta be clear repercussions for damage to any vehicles. So one of the things we're gonna talk about, not in this episode, but in a later episode, is we have recently created a hiring method where we're being able to we're able to hire people at will now. So I mean we, we've hired six people in the past two weeks, and before it was probably we had probably hired six people in the previous three or four probably four months. Um, the fact we are now able to hire more people is going to allow us to have more repercussions for issues because these individuals uh, don't feel like they've got a job no matter what. It, before, they were kind of controlling us in a way. It was, we couldn't really get rid of them because we were short-staffed. Now that we have fresh people coming in, you create a, a culture of competition in a way where these guys feel like, all right, I'm replaceable. And you know I want to become irreplaceable, so I have to really, really perform. That's, uh, that's something that, that we're doing. So. Clear repercussions, any damage at all to vehicle, scratch, dent, ding, whatever, to, uh, probably going to do about a two-week demotion. So we're actually going to demote them down to TL, $10 an hour, I mean down to Navigator, $10 an hour. Uh, one month demotion for any at-fault accident, depending on the severity, it could be worse. If you total a truck like this, it's going to be worse. And then uh, either at, least, at minimum a year suspension for a second at-fault accident. That's what we're going to have to implement. We'll let everybody know how it goes as it proceeds. But that's the issues we've been coming up against uh, yesterday. Kind of, kind of made made yesterday suck in a way. We got any questions at all, Aaron? So uh, I don't know if we got any hockey fans. Uh, it was my wife's birthday last night. We went to the Carolina Hurricanes versus Washington Capitals game. Complete domination by the Hurricanes. They got another game coming up Thursday. We'll see how that goes. I'm gonna try and make that game as well. Decibel level, I think, went up to about 118. So that place was rocking and rolling. I had a headache once I left. It was awesome to see. Uh, we here at the, in the Raleigh market are not huge hockey fans until it's playoff time or the team's doing well. If the team does, what does well, we come out and we're, we're raucous and loud. Uh, if they don't do well, we are the last in the league in attendance. So uh, that's what I had going on yesterday. That made this truck accident a little bit better because I really had a great time in that game. So, um, and actually, I, in my mistake, we are going to talk about this hiring process. And this is something you guys want to pay a lot of attention to. Those of you guys that are expanding, you're growing, you're hiring people, you're going about it the Jerry way, you're advertising, you're getting new trucks. That means you're going to need new crews. You're going to have to hire people. Guys, we are in an employee job market right now. Three years ago, it was an employer job market. Three years ago, you could set, you could, you could make employees jump through hoops before they're going to come and work with you. It's not the case now. 
you've got to be the quickest to the punch to get these guys. You got to recruit them, you got to interview them the first, and then you got to offer them the very first. You'd be the first one to offer them. If you don't do that, you're not going to get them. So understand it is an employee's job market. You've got to be aggressive. So as soon as Indeed, you go to Indeed.com, you put up a, an ad on Indeed. Uh, so you, I don't, we don't do Craigslist anymore. We used to do Craigslist. We probably hired the first 100 employees we ever had off of Craigslist, uh, maybe 150. And then now it's been, you know, mainly Indeed. Craigslist isn't all that good. So you post an ad on Indeed. You go up here to employers slash post job. You give a great job ad. And then as soon, what happens is these guys are going to send in their resumes. As soon as they send in a resume, get on the phone immediately, call them up. If it's not you, have it be somebody else. Call them up and uh, say, hey, this is, this is Lee with Junk Doctors. Just got your resume in. If you got a minute, I'd like to talk to you about potentially coming to work with us. Then go through, go through some questions. The way we do it here is Melissa in our call center calls them. If the person sounds decent to Melissa, she sets up a time for Christian to actually do a phone interview. Christian goes through the normal questions. What's your driving record like? Are you gonna pass, you know, what's your background like? Are you, can you pass a drug test? Why are you interested in this job? What other jobs have you applied for? Uh, tell us about your last job. Why'd you quit your last job? Why were you fired from your last job? All right, who's some references? He goes through an entire list. He tells about the, the, the downside of this job. Wasps, hornets, snakes, heat, cold. What else is there, Aaron? Uh, some customers. Uh, cat, this terrible smells, hoarders, what else? Yeah, nasty stuff you accidentally stick your hand in. Yeah. Uh, bed bugs. Yeah, or we had um, uh, uh, just like crap, feces, like human feces. We had one guy, like he left at a couch at one time and he swears a, 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 some human crap dropped down and hit him on his forehead. I don't know if that was the case or not. But we cover all of that. Refrigerators, how bad they smell, the mold, the just nastiness of them. Uh, bed bugs, meaning having to put on suits. We try and scare these guys off on the telephone interview. If they're scared, if they're not scared off, they say, hey, you know, this is probably for me, and we feel like they're for us, then we say, all right, based off of this phone interview, I'm gonna give you a tentative job offer right now. But I need you to come in on so-and-so date at so-and-so time. Uh, we're gonna do an in-person interview, and I'm gonna run a background check, and I'm gonna call your references. As long as those three things check out right there, you've got this job. You've got a tentative job offer right now. As long as the interview goes well, the background check goes well, and your references check out, you've got a job. We've hired probably six people in the past two weeks doing that, two, three weeks. I, I, six, six or eight people in the past two or three weeks. So that, you've got to be aggressive in order to get these guys. I know some people are struggling with it, uh, hiring. Um, this is the way we found works for us. Now, training's part of it. And the other thing is, guys, listen, even with training, I fully expect, I hope it's a lot less, because we've had, we've totaled two trucks. Um, two vehicles have been totaled in about the past three months. Now, one was not our fault. One, somebody, somebody else crossed the center line and hit us. Uh, this one was 100% our fault. Stuff like this is going to occur. You've just got to know when you hire employees, there's going to be stuff like this is going to happen. And, uh, you know, that's a problem you're going to face. But the nice thing is it's a good problem. That means you've got employees, you've got business. Obviously, if the truck was wrecked, then, uh, then they were heading to a job or coming from a job, so you're making money. You just got to try and correct those issues. Hopefully, me talking about what we're doing, and we'll cover more in depth as it actually starts. Maybe we even get some uh, video footage of some of these guys going through driving training. Um, will help you guys avoid that moving forward. Any questions? Okay. Any questions at all, guys, please post. Any questions, comments, Facebook, YouTube, we are happy to cover them. So, uh, Junk Removal Authority, in addition to our great call center, we also provide Google Ad, one of the, some of the best stuff we do is our marketing. So we've got Google Ads management services, search engine optimization, and paid Facebook ads, uh, video ads, high quality, all three extremely high quality, all three proven in the junk removal industry. Almost all the work we do is in junk removal. So if you guys are looking to expand and grow your business, our marketing services can 100% help. Give us a call at 919-617-1975 or shoot us an email, lee at junkra.com. So when you do that great advertising, you wanna make sure the, guy, the people come back. Our services are not cheap. They're cheaper than some. They're more expensive than, than many. Uh, it's a premium service with proven results. If you're going to do that advertising, you want to be able to get repeat and referral business. So how do you, when you go out and you get those customers, how do you get them to keep coming back to you? 
that's critical for you creating a successful junk removal business and scaling. You're not gonna create a profitable business off a first time customer because you have too much money into uh, to, uh, getting that customer. You have, those customers have to use you again, they gotta refer you and they gotta, rep gotta repost reviews online. So number one, you do have to do that in advertising. You gotta be aggressive to get that initial customer. If you don't get the initial customer, forget about repeat business, how are they gonna reuse you if they hadn't used you to start with? So you need to be doing Google Ads, Home Advisor, SEO, Facebook, um, Craigslist if you want to, we don't do it, Yelp, uh, networking, Board of, you know, going to Chamber of Commerce events, Rotary Club meetings, uh, stopping in apartment complexes. You gotta be doing all this kind of stuff because you gotta get these customers in order for them to come back to you. Then, once they do book, once your advertising works, once your sales skill has worked on the phone, you gotta show up in uniform, you need to have a clean truck if at all possible. You need to have a professional appearance. You need to work hard. You need to work carefully. You can't damage property. You need to be smiling, both you and your team member, or if you have an just if you have employees, both team members have to be smiling that entire job. They got to carry on conversations with customers. They got to look professional. They've got to do a great job, and they have to take care of customers. You do that right. That's all you got to do in junk removal to get repeat business. The price, price is secondary. Everything I mentioned right there, uniform, clean trucks, professional appearance, working hard and smiling is l more important. Those items are more important than price. Your price can't be exorbitant, but if you can do these things right, you can charge a lot more than if you do them wrong. And you're gonna get more repeat customers. You need to sweep up and tidy up at the end of jobs. Do the, the little things at the very end of the job. So 95% of what you do, or even 98, probably 98% of what you do is expected. You showing up at the job site, you removing the junk, you not damaging the walls, you being on time, you show, you know, that that stuff is expected. They expect a junk removal company to show up and get the job done. What's unexpected is the uniform a lot of times. What's unexpected is the conversation that that's provided. What's unexpected is sweeping up. What's unexpected is after the job's done, somebody calls with a follow-up call. What's unexpected is a handwritten thank you card. Don't give them just something. It doesn't even be branded. Go to Office Max or Amazon sells. They're made by Wilton. Uh, get 100, they sell, sell them in 100 pack. Handwritten thank you card. Just say, dear so-and-so, thank you very much for your business. Please let us know if we can ever again be of service. Send them a refrigerator magnet. They stick it on a fridge. I stick it on a fridge and they don't forget about you. We got thousands of refrigerator magnets sitting on people's refrigerators. If they need junk removal, they've been staring at this thing every time they've gone to get a, a, a gallon of milk or taking that midnight snack. They've been looking at a junk doctor's magnet. They're gonna call us when they're ready to book. Asking the question, is there anything else we can do for you? And doing it. Now, that doesn't mean you don't have to charge. If it's 10 minutes or less, if it's, remo if it's moving a piece of furniture around a home, it's an easy, simple job little chance of actually damaging something. Hey, go in and take care of this thing for that customer if it's less than 10 minutes time. Don't charge them for it. Add in a little extra, over deliver. If it's more than that, then just tell them, hey, be happy to do that for you. We can definitely take care of that. It's gonna run X amount more dollars. Uh, that's a great way to upsell too. So what are you doing? You're making more money and you're making a happy customer It's gonna come back and use you again and refer you. Um, Ask for a review at the end of the job. Just to, That's another way of making sure you're doing a great job. That's also helping you get referral business, even though it's online. A review, in a way, is referral business because somebody saw you, saw the review, chose to, chose to choose your company, or chose your company because of that review. That's kind of like a referral. Do that follow-up call, like I mentioned. That handwritten thank you card, I already said it. I then get them in a monthly email campaign, MailChimp, MailChimp.com. Set them up for professional emails, uh, monthly emails sent out remind you, them of you. What you don't want to happen is them to be really impressed by you, want to use you again. Two years down the line, they forget who you were. They look it up online and they say, oh yeah, oh yeah, I use junk, I use, you know, it was junk doctors they use. And they look it up, oh yeah, it was Junk King. It was a red truck, it wasn't a yellow truck. It was a, it was a red truck, it was Junk King. I'm gonna call them up. So we get calls all the time from people that think if they wanted to reuse Got Junk or Junk King or somebody or College Hunks, uh, Junk Luggers. And, well, not luggers as much, but every so often. But what, what we, and they're like, yeah, we've used you before. We look in the system and we don't see them. It's like, ah, for some reason you're not coming up in our system. Let me go and get your information down. We'll get you booked. We appreciate your repeat business. Meanwhile, we know, they might even mention, yeah, you know, uh, you know, you, you guys have red trucks, right? And, you know, we, well, you know, they're red from time to time, you know, depending on if we ran through some, some, some red dirt or red clay or something. But, uh, you know, we go ahead and take the job even though we have an inkling of suspicion that this indeed 
came from another customer. You don't want that happening to you. Monthly emails and send postcards once a quarter, once a month, every six months, once a year, some regularity, get them postcards out so they're not forgetting who your company is. Got some questions? Yeah, we got right. one from uh, Myshaw on YouTube. Okay. It says, what keeps the person obligated to stay for the entire year of probation? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. They could leave, and that's just, you know, if they leave, then uh, then you just have to find a replacement. That's why it's really important to always be hiring. Uh, very, they very well might leave, but the goal is by taking that probationary period is they realize how serious it is that they're going to go from $14, $15, $16 an hour down to $10 an hour and they have a year probation or a month probation, they're missing out on that. So the goal is to hopefully they take this driving thing too serious. I know we got guys that aren't taking this driving thing serious. It scares the hell out of me because this is a really, really, not only expensive piece of equipment, but it's a heavy piece of equipment. It's a, it's a bomb, it's a weapon that these guys screwing around, hopefully they're not texting, but if they're texting or they're just not paying attention, they could kill somebody. They could kill somebody and not only, they need to understand, we need a better job of understanding, not only can it hurt their job and their business, but they go out, if they're texting and driving and they hit somebody, us as a company, we're gonna be in trouble. We're gonna have issues of our own. They could get that guy for involuntary manslaughter. That dude could serve, if he kills somebody, he could serve prison time. And we gotta do a damn good job making sure that our drivers, junk doctors drivers and then the drivers of your companies understand that the seriousness that this heavy vehicle could take somebody's life, and if that happens, they could serve jail time. And if, if, if that occurs and they get drug tested and they have drugs in their system, it can be even worse for them. So um, there's just a lot, of, there's a lot of legality or a lot of liability that we have when we hire employees. Now, you have to make sure you have insurance. We've got insurance. It's going to cover us if we get sued, even if we kill somebody, which luckily hasn't happened yet, knock on wood. Um, you know, we're going to be covered because we have the insurance to prevent that from occurring. They might leave. If they leave, no big deal. They couldn't take care of your truck. The first, if they got a year suspension and they've been in two at-fault accidents, they, they're not, you know, they've already cost you a bunch of money anyway. Anything else? Yeah, we got one from Tony on YouTube. Who's proven to be the best repeat customers? I mean, we get a lot of business. Um, what I'm mainly talking about there is just residential, just just individual uh, individuals that they're homeowners. But I mean, we get a ton of business from apartment complexes, um, housing authorities, remodelers. We do, people been knocking on the Baxter stuff with waste management. We do a bunch of Baxter pickups with waste management. Um, so I mean, we have, a, I think you're talking about commercial accounts. We get a lot, of, apartments are our best, Apart, apartment complexes are our best. Real estate agents, we get a bunch. Professional organizers, we get a bunch. Um, moving companies refer business to us from time to time. We've got kind of a, a moving affiliate deal set up with them. Um, so there's different businesses and then just network with other small businesses that'll refer you. If they're doing a particular service, if, if a service business is doing a great job, you're always going to get questions. Hey, I need some power washing done. Do you know who to refer on power washing? It's harder when you have employees, but if you're on the job, refer it to a power washer and then that way the power washer's happy and he refers it back to you. So those are, those are great repeat business. All repeat business is great though. So you wanna really work those residential customers. You want them coming back to use you again and again and again. Because if you guys are doing the JRA way, you know the JRA way ain't all that profitable the first two years. But that third year, that's when you start kicking everybody else's ass that's been, that's been, uh, been real, real cheap. You know, in, in the third year, you'll probably make more than they made in the first two years in terms of profit. And then it's just, on from there, you've got freedom in your life. You're not having to work all the time on the truck all the time. You can go on vacation for two months and come back. And you could ultimately cash out at the end by selling a company. If we want to sell junk doctors, I could get over a million dollars for junk doctors. You know, there's a few things we need to fix, like doofus is run, you know, running through a, a, a ditch and tearing a truck up. But you know, I, I work three, four hours a week, maybe five hours a week on junk doctors and make a great income off of it. It could be sold if we ever wanted to. Okay, so kind of wrapping up here. We've got about four minutes left, so any last minute questions, please, please, please bring them up. I want to cover some normal pricing or single item pricing. We get questions about this fairly often. You see them on Facebook forums. Um, what do you charge for single item pickups? General, this is going to vary from market to market. So if you're in a market that the traffic's worse, it's more expensive labor, disposal fees are higher, you're going to charge a bit more. But normally a couch pickup, we're somewhere around 125 to 150. 
a swing set with no fort somewhere around 225 if it has a fort somewhere around 350 uh, mattress uh, 125 dollars if it's a mattress and box spring king mattress and box springs then we'll probably be closer to 150 160 uh, piano uh, we only do spinet pianos they're about three and a half foot tall if they're inside the home that's all we're doing that's all the liability we want to accept in terms of damaging customers property these are spinet pianos right here um, we normally charge about 350 for spinet from inside the home. If it's on a second floor, we'll bump it up to about 450. Um, we will do upright pianos. I see here's a pretty good picture of a spinet right here. We will do upright pianos uh, if they're in a garage, an area where we can carry them without uh, potentially damaging a hardwood floor or bumping a wall or something like that or somebody getting hurt. Uh, or if the customer's okay, if we take a sledgehammer to it and beat the crap out of it and just uh, take the individual pieces and load it up. Some customers aren't good with that, some are. Uprights, we're going to be closer to four to five, six hundred. Grand pianos, we've only ever done one or two grand pianos, and that was beat down with a sledge. Some people, it's going to make them cringe. The fact we beat up a piano sledge, we weren't moving it otherwise. We were hired to do a job, and we did it. Um, you know, those grand pianos, they weigh a lot. You're going to be closer to six, seven hundred dollars. A lot of people aren't really willing to pay it. Um, Washer and dryer, we normally do 125 for one, 150 for both. Refrigerator, $125. A dresser, around 125. Maybe if it's a small dresser, we have a 125 minimum. So if you have a 99 minimum, maybe a small dresser end table, you're at 99. An entertainment center, those big suckers that are about six foot tall, we're normally around 300 plus on those if that's the only item they have, maybe a little under 300. Rear projection TV, generally 150, 175, 200, somewhere in that range. Um, obviously, there are other items out there. Grill removal, that's going to be a, a minimum charge normally. Um, you know, regular TVs, normally a minimum charge plus a, a recycling fee. So if you're $99 for like a CR, not a flat screen, but like a, like a CRT TV, you know, the big ones, probably $99 minimum plus uh, maybe a $10 recycling fee. The Sony Trinitrons, if you guys have ever done a Sony Trinitron, these things are massive. There's chance for back injury. There's ch chance for property damage. They got the surround sound speakers on them. This thing weighs about 300 uh, bucks. I mean, not 300, 300, bucks, uh, 300 pounds. Uh, we normally want to get about $200 for one of these suckers. Rear projection TV is about 200 also. So, I mean, these are just monsters. If it's the only item to have, that's what we're at. Uh, any final questions at all? What we got? Yep. We've got one from uh, Myshawn Fogg on YouTube. What have you done recently to train your team to drive the trucks correctly? Yeah, we hadn't. Uh, that's that's what we're going into. So we've got this driving program, these safety courses. Um, this is North Carolina. It's trafficschool.com. I don't know a whole lot about it. There was also a truck driver training school. So we're going to implement our own uh, our own driving school as well. But we're going to put people through these, especially until we develop one. So I'm going to send a couple guys into CDL training. They're going to be our. They're going to be the ones that put these navigators through driver training. Um, there is an online course also, online driver training. What the heck was it? I can't remember. It was, uh, shoot, I can't remember. It was yellow. I remember that truck driving training online course. This is probably it. Dang, I can't find it. There's um, online training training courses as well for truck driving. Um, again, the online courses, a lot of times it just serves to make sure that the employee understands how important it is what they, that, you know, what they do is. Uh, getting behind the wheel, there's some actual great information that, uh, and, and skill set that can be involved in that. That's going to cost money, but I mean, this, uh, this accident costs us money too. I can't find the thing. I guess I've gotten off of it. The accident costs us money also. So just make sure you guys understand how serious it is uh, that they could really, really hurt somebody themselves or other people. Uh, put them through a driving training course. Or if you, the owner's involved, I mean, you yourself can teach them how to drive. If you're riding along with them, they're going to learn good habits from you. That's important. What happens as you grow, the owner's not on the truck is at all. And... Um, you know, then you've got team leads training other team leaders that can pick up bad habits. So it's easier when you're smaller. That's the reason the first six years we were in business, I don't think we had a single accident. We've had two or three in the past year. Uh, so that's what's extremely important. Just got to make sure it's, people understand the importance. Don't be afraid to spend money on training either. Any other questions?
Okay, guys. Uh, want to reiterate, this is the time of year right now, in the spring, in the summer, when you guys are extremely busy, this is the time of year to, the expa to expand. This is the time to buy more trucks. This is the time to advertise. This is the time to hire, to get your business growing, to get those customers the first time so they come back and use you again, to set you up to have potential repeat business in the winter time, which gets slower. The profits can be made now. Take those profits, reinvest them. Don't get a boat, don't get a nice car, don't get some BS that doesn't earn you money. Right now, you gotta grow your company. You need to reinvest in advertising, you need to reinvest in trucks, reinvest in people. Get this business grown, get it big. Once it's big, that's when you got a lot of extra money coming in. Don't piddle around with $20,000, $40,000 and go buy a new truck. Wait until your company is bringing in twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a month, then go buy whatever the hell you wanna buy. Invest, invest, invest in your company, and it's eventually gonna start puking money back out at you faster than you can put back in it. This is Lee Godbold with Junk Removal Authority. We do this every Tuesday and Thursday, 12 o'clock Eastern time, making hay with JRA. Check us online at junkra.com. Those of you guys that are really busy, this call center is gonna save you, it's gonna it's gonna help save your relationships, it's gonna make your life better.